Benzene is the simplest aromatic hydrocarbon, consisting of six carbons in a hexagonal ring. Its bonds resonate between single and double bonds, so it's often drawn with just a circle in the middle to depict this. Benzene is highly carcinogenic, so this reaction should probably not be attempted. This procedure is based off of Nile Red video, How to Make Benzene, and a Science Madness post entitled Benzene Synthesis. I will post links to both in the video description. For this reaction, we will need 100 grams of sodium benzoate, 60 grams of sodium hydroxide, and a bit of anhydrous magnesium sulfate. These are all simple to get. The sodium benzoate is a common food additive, and I got mine on Amazon. Sodium hydroxide is a drain cleaner, and I purchased it at the hardware store. Magnesium sulfate, or Epsom salts, is used as a bath salt. However, it comes in its hydrated form and must be dried in an oven prior to use. Because this reaction requires high heat, I made a reaction vessel from an empty paint can, a pipe, and some adapters, glued together with steel JB Weld. This was all purchased from Home Depot and cost about $12 to make, but you could make it for cheaper if you just JB welded the pipe directly to the lid. I also had to file down the inside of the pipe to fit my glass still head. This next part will create a lot of dangerous sodium hydroxide powder, so it's important to wear safety gear. The sodium hydroxide and the sodium benzoate were finely powdered and mixed together in a blender. This is because the distillation will be dry. No solvents or stirring will be used, so we have to maximize the contact between the two reactants. The powder was put into the reaction vessel and my still head was fitted into the pipe with a lot of PTFE tape. Then I set up for distillation. After about a half an hour, white vapor made its way up the still head but was having trouble making it past the angle. Additionally, the heat from the propane was starting to warm up my condenser, so I insulated the apparatus with some aluminum foil. After fiddling with the temperature for a while, I started getting drops of distillate coming over between 60 and 140 degrees. The temperature varied wildly since it was hard to get a good rate of distillation with the gas burner, so I messed around with the knob a little too frequently. Some gas was escaping the flask and it smelled distinctly carcinogenic, so I attached a hose to the outlet and had it blow away from me. I stopped the distillation when little distillate was coming over, and whatever did was way past the boiling point of benzene. Interestingly, something froze in the condenser, and after I turned the pump off, it began to melt into my flask. I was left with a decent amount of orange liquid. Left inside the can was a gross mess of solids, consisting probably primarily of sodium carbonate, leftover reactants, and whatever came off the paint can. These should all dissolve in water fairly easily. The top of the paint can looked disgusting, but surprisingly the JB Weld stood up perfectly. I had doubts because one user on Science Madness said that the benzene destroyed his JB Weld, but he may not have been using the steel version. The orange liquid was washed with two aliquots of 50 milliliters of water, though I should have used less since benzene is soluble in water. With 100 mils of water, I expected to lose about 0.2 mils of benzene. The mixture was capped, shaken, and vented, and the lower water layer was drained and stored to be properly discarded. Then I set up for simple distillation. I started collecting distillate at about 76 degrees, which was put in a beaker. Then the temperature reached 78 and stayed there for a while. At first I thought this was still forerun, so I kept collecting it in the beaker. Then I remembered that my solution was still wet, and this could possibly be an azeotrope with water coming over. So I swapped the flask and collected distillate until the rate slowed down considerably. Because of my mistake with the azeotrope, I still had a lot of benzene in the forerun beaker. So I simply drained as much of the orange liquid as I could into the waste container and poured the dirty benzene back into the flask for redistillation. This time I collected anything above about 77 degrees. I was left with a cloudy white liquid. The cloudiness was due to water in the benzene. To dry up the benzene, I poured in an arbitrary amount of anhydrous magnesium sulfate and shook the flask. The benzene started clearing up almost immediately. I left the flask to dry for about an hour, occasionally shaking it. Then the benzene was filtered through cotton into a graduated cylinder. I measured 31 mils of crystal clear benzene, weighing about 27 grams. This corresponds very well with the density of benzene. I poured everything into a storage container and labeled it appropriately. The reaction that's happening is known as a thermal decarboxylation. First, the oxygen from the sodium hydroxide attacks the carbonyl, while the double bonded oxygen on the sodium benzoate takes back its electrons. Then, as the oxygen moves to reform the double bond, 
the benzene takes the hydrogen from the other oxygen, breaking the carbon-carbon bond. This forms benzene and sodium carbonate. The 27 gram recovery represents a yield of about 50%. This is pretty good considering the expected yield of 45-60% to 60 according to Science Madness Wiki. Additionally, with the price I paid for the reagents, it's possible to calculate the marginal cost of the benzene, which is about 11 cents per gram.